everyone. I hope you're having a good morning. Um, I will be struggling just a little bit with this lesson today because I can't find my glasses and I don't have my contacts with me. So uh, I'll do the best I can. And if I mess the scripture up a little bit, you read along with me and know uh, what the right scripture is. The uh, lesson today is found in that First Thessalonians, the fourth chapter, beginning with the first verse. Uh, and the title of it is called Demonstrated. Uh, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Lord Jesus, I just ask you to be with me this morning as I try to do this lesson. Lord, forgive me where I fail you. Lord, I pray that I can do a, a decent job, Lord, and that, that I can teach in a way that's easily understood. And Lord, I just ask for a blessing on those that are watching this morning. Help us and lead us and guide us. I ask that you be close to um, the Abby Ritter family as she's passed away. And I pray that you'll be close to the Tommy Fullington family as he has passed. And Lord, we just pray that there are others in our church who are in need, sick, um, fighting uh, illnesses. And Lord, we pray you'll be with each one. And Lord, pray that you'll be with our pastor as he stands before the congregation this morning and give him the words to speak. And Lord, I pray for uh, those that stand in the Sunday school classes this morning, and I pray that you'll give them a special blessing so that they can teach. And Lord, I just ask that you lead, guide, and direct us. Keep us safe. And Lord, always, always, always stay close to us, Lord, for we need you each and every day. We ask all this in Jesus' name. We thank you most of all for Jesus. Amen. Um, Paul was the kind of person who was kind of an unforgettable kind of person. Uh, he made a strong impression wherever he went. Uh, he, um, you either liked him or you didn't. He, he was just that kind of a person. Uh, people either embraced what he said or they rejected what he said. And of course, that's much like Jesus Christ. We either reject his message and, and accept him or we reject it and reject him. Uh, when Paul was in Philippi, he was persecuted and, uh, you know, basically run out of town and uh, rejected his, uh, he was rejected by the people there and his message was not received, the message of the, the gospel. When he went to Thessalonica, it wasn't a whole lot different. He also uh, was, uh, you know, he was only able to be there three weeks before he had to leave. And, uh, uh, I think his stay there, if I recall correctly, was approximately three weeks, and he had to move on before uh, because the people who uh, opposed him uh, made it uh, unhealthy, you know, for him to stay stick around. Uh, Paul many times was beaten, stoned, shipwrecked, you know, all those things because he was trying to do what he felt like the Lord was leading him to do, and the devil constantly tried to. Uh, sway him or, or uh, waylay him so that he couldn't do what uh, he needed to do. <clears throat> Excuse me. But, you know, they could not stop the message of Christ, no matter what they did. Um, the church of uh, Thessalonica, even though he was only there for a short time, embraced Paul's message, and it changed their lives, and they became a uh, light uh, in, the, in the darkness of that area, and uh, they... Uh, was a church that was known, you know, for loving others and uh, um, doing the right thing. Though Paul couldn't physically be with them, uh, he he constantly prayed for them, and he constantly um, tried to communicate with them through letters. And uh, the growing church of Thessalonica was uh, making a difference in that area. In the, they were in the Macedonia area, and they were surrounded uh, by, you know, uh, different areas there that uh, needed to be reached for the Lord. And uh, their testimony kind of spread throughout the Roman Empire. So this was a great thing. Um, let's read uh, 1 through 5. And I'm going to try, you all. I hope that I will do a decent job. I cannot find my glasses, and I cannot, and I do not have my contacts. So uh, I'll do the best I can on reading this. Additionally, then, brothers and sisters, we ask and encourage you in the Lord Jesus 
that as you have received instruction from us on how you should live and please God, as you are doing, do this even more, for you know what commands we gave you through the Lord Jesus. That is God's will, your sanctification that you keep away from sexual immorality, that each of you knows how to control his own body in holiness and honor, not with lustful passions like the Gentiles who don't know God. Okay, we'll stop right there for a second. Paul kind of knows this church is doing the right thing and uh, going in the right direction, but he wants to further instruct them. <coughs> Excuse me. Paul was basically, you know, not just talking about having faith, but acting like you have faith and, and letting your actions show that you are a, a follower of Jesus Christ. And he was kind of laying out their faith on a daily basis, not just on Sunday, not just on special occasions, but living it every day. Um, we all have our head knowledge of Jesus Christ. People hear about Jesus Christ. We see things on TV. We read things. We hear things on the radio. Uh, we hear about God. But hearing about God and knowing God is two different things completely. Uh, having head knowledge and heart knowledge, that's two different things. And uh, um, head knowledge alone is never enough uh, to save us. And, and substitute for uh, accepting Jesus Christ as our Savior, uh, letting him be the Lord of our lives. Uh, when we live our lives as Christians, others should be able to tell it. Others should be able to tell there's a difference in the way we respond, that a difference in the way we act, uh, a difference in our choices. And uh, so it's it's more than head knowledge. Uh, we have heard the saying many times, actions speak louder than words. And lots of times you can tell by someone's actions their moral character. And uh, so I think he wants us to realize, Paul wants us to realize, this church and us, that it's still the same today, you know, uh, that he was speaking at that church back then, but he's speaking to us today, the scripture is, that we, there needs to be a difference in our lives. There needs to be a difference in how we uh, act and and know, know for sure that, you know, that it's not just head knowledge, that it's heart knowledge too. Uh, we can attend church. We can say the, uh, you know, the right things. We can say the right words. Uh, but if we don't live it, if we don't act it out, each and every day in our daily lives, then people question our faith. They question our um, true faith, our true uh, um, connection to Jesus Christ. Uh, we are to strive to walk like Jesus. Once we accept him, uh, you know, then he changes our lives and, uh, and that change should be evident. Paul addressed God's will <clears throat> Excuse me. God's will is more than just the big decisions in our lives. God's will is us following him each and every day. Um, we have daily challenges that come our way uh, through the years that uh, we have to deal with. And each and every day we have to choose. You know, are we going to follow Jesus? Or are we going to let the devil get in there and mess us up? So Paul says, follow God's will. Uh and following his will is to embrace his, his character, to embrace his character in our lives. It comes down to choosing to do the right thing. You know, I tell my children and I tell my grandchildren all the time, just do the right thing. Just do it. Just do the right thing. Choose to do the right thing. And uh, pretty much, I mean, sometimes it'll, you know, may get you in a mess, but most of the time, if you choose to do the right thing, things will come out okay. 
It come down, and that's what it kind of comes down to, choosing to follow Jesus or cho choosing to let Satan get a hold. Paul uh, addresses sexual immorality uh, with these people. And uh, believers during this time, you have to remember that the Greek culture and the Roman culture, uh, they worshiped idols and they had um, prostitutes who were actually were in the temples. And these people would go in, they had both male and female prostitutes, and uh, they would go into them and it would be a form of some kind of worship. And uh, so uh, it was considered, in their culture, it was considered okay. And so Paul uh, was fighting against these uh, uh, idolic, um, uh, these practices of idolatry. And uh, he wanted the people to know that there, there was something wrong with it, that it wasn't uh, okay. Sexual purity um, is part of holy living. Uh, it's a challenge for all human beings. Uh, we are made uh, female and male, and we all are human beings who have uh, uh, human desires that God uh, allows us to have, and we have to work to channel those uh, desires and those uh, feelings uh, in the appropriate way. And uh, we, um, we are responsible for our behavior. We're responsible to keep our uh, conduct in control. And uh, self-control is one of the uh, fruits of the Spirit. So um, it is a challenge. You know, people who think it's not a challenge, I think they're, they're fooled because we are human and we do have human feelings and desires, but we have to uh, control those feelings and desires and channel them to the appropriate, uh, to the appropriate uh, situation. And uh, of course, we believe that, uh, you know, sex is cont contained to the marriage between the husband and wife. That's the only uh, thing that we feel like is acceptable to the Lord. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm so sorry I stopped up this morning. Um, you know, if you believe that Christ lives in you, once that we accept Jesus Christ as our Savior, He comes to live within our hearts. And uh, if we believe that, then He goes everywhere we go, and He is there for everything we do. And um, so um, that can make us a little sad sometimes because we fail him so miserably and uh, we we want to be we want to honor him with our actions that's our goal as a christian we want to honor him um we all have dishonored christ either by our thoughts or by our deeds so we are you know we're in that same boat there's no no one holy no not one you know no all has sinned and come short of the glory of god and we have to remember that but we also want to know that we learn from our mistakes and that we move on and that we live better lives because of christ living in us um, he did so much for us you know he died on the cross for us and uh, it makes us want to honor him in our in our in our lives um, we want to uh, live lives that um, show others that that we love Jesus and that we honor Him in His um, in in our lives. You know, we honor Him for what He's done for us. Let's look on at six through eight. And I'll do the best I can, y'all. This means one must not transgress against and take advantage of a brother or sister in this manner because the Lord is an avenger of all these offenses as we are also previously told and warned you and warned you for God has not called us to impurity but to live in holiness consequently anyone who rejects this does not reject man but God who gives you his Holy Spirit. <clears throat> the 
these verses warn against um, sexual, um, taking sexual advantage of some, some one or some, you know, someone. And uh, God warns against it. He, he warns against sexual impurity, but he also warns against sexual abuse. And uh, it, we have a responsibility to protect others from uh, mistreatment and abuse. And uh, we have that responsibility. God frowns upon it. And uh, uh, we know that th there is a huge, huge number in the world as far as uh, individuals who uh, fall victim to sex trafficking. I looked some of it up and uh, India happens to be uh, the number one. Uh, and it says up to 14 million uh, individuals are sex trafficked. Um, China's next with 2 million. Pakistan is next uh, with two, uh, with one, 1 million, I believe. I may have written it down wrong. And in the United States, it's estimated that over 17,000 people, 17,500, I believe was the term, uh, per year. And, and they believe that it's probably higher than what they know. These are uh, report, these are confirmed cases but it's probably much higher of people who are abducted and uh, put into sex, sex trafficking uh, in our country. And uh, it's just um, horrible. It's more than sad, it's disgusting. And it is a abomination to the God. And uh, it says that, um, you know, anyone has value in God's eyes and anyone has the right to be protected uh, from uh, mistreatment. We all have value in God's eyes. And uh, God is our avenger. <coughs> it says here uh, that he is our avenger. And, you know, his judgment can be swift. And his judgment is always righteous. But uh, he does not um, turn his eyes from, they, from this. He, it, it's an abomination to him. And... Uh, Fear of judgment or discipline sometimes can deter, deter us from doing something. I know, you know, as children, um, if your parents said, you know, I'm, if you do that, I'm going to spank you. Uh, well, sometimes, you know, that would keep you from doing it because you didn't want, you didn't want that spanking. And uh, if you did go ahead and do it, then you usually... If they found it out, you usually got that spank. But um, the fear of something, you know, uh, would keep you uh, from doing certain things. But um, having a healthy fear of your parents, I, I always said, you know, that there's a, there, there is a healthy fear of your parents that kind of keeps you in line a little bit. And, uh, but having a healthy fear of God is wise. You know, it's wise because he sees all, he knows all. And uh, that's why we need to ask forgiveness for the things that we do. But um, this is not something God chooses. It's something the devil is behind. And uh, he abhors it and he will avenge his, uh, his people. Um, when we talked about uh, choosing and, you know, that we might choose to do something, not to do something out of fear of our parents. You know, we should choose to do right um, because we love the Lord, you know, because of everything he's done for us. That's why we should choose to do right. The Holy Spirit, you know, that's part of his job. He comes to live in us and he changes us and helps us make better decisions. Uh, but we can selfishly choose to do wrong. And when we do that, then... Uh, you know, we can suffer the consequences for it. Let's look on at verses 9 through 12. I'm struggling, you all, so bear with me. About brotherly love, you don't need me to write you because you yourselves are taught by God to love, to love one another. <laughs> in fact you are doing 
this toward all the brothers and sisters in the entire region of Macedonia. But we encourage you, brothers and sisters, do this even more. To seek to lead to seek to lead a quiet life, to mind your own business, and to work with your own hands as we commanded you, so that you may behave properly in the presence of outsiders and not be dependent on anyone. I love that verse. I think it's a great verse. Paul gave... Um, he, he kind of goes on, you know, emphasizing the importance of brotherly love. Uh, Paul didn't have to say much to this church. He felt like the church was doing a really good job, um, you know, embracing others and loving others and, and uh, reaching out. So uh, that I'm sure that that was a, a pleasing thing to Paul. I'm sure that touched his heart that they were following the Lord the way they were. I think by nature, you know, we as human beings, we're selfish and uh, we're sinful, you know, uh, by nature. Uh, but through the powers of the love of Jesus Christ, our, our natures change. And I think he transforms us. You know, uh, sometimes it seems to me like you see somebody and they are just changed overnight when they accept Jesus Christ. We're all changed inside overnight. But I mean, you can just see a visible difference, even in the way they look. And uh, it just seems like a 180 degree turnaround, you know, or a 360, whichever it is. And, uh, but they just absolutely, you know, maybe it's because their lifestyle was um, so sinful that you really, really can see the change. And I don't want to be judgmental here. I just want to say, there, you know, you can really, really see a change because there's some difference in the lifestyle. And uh, for me, I believe my faith. You know, I've been in church since I was a child. And uh, I've not always done right. I've not always lived right. And uh, I've, I've not always been faithful. But I feel like for me personally, that my my salvation has been a growing process. I feel like I, you know, each and every year, I feel like I'm, I'm changing a little bit more. I'm, I'm not where I was and I'm not where I want to be, you know, but I'm, I'm, I'm changing, you know, all the time. And, uh, I hope, you know, when I face Jesus that the words worthy you can't you know I can't ever be worthy but I hope I'm better than I am now I'm grateful that Jesus accepts us just as we are uh, where would we be if he didn't he accepts us he loves us he works on our faults and our and he encourages us and uh, tries to uh, lead us in the way that we should go you know, in verses 11 and 12, I love these verses. He gives some very good advice for us. Uh, he says, seek to live a quiet life. I love a quiet life. I, I, I very much am at peace uh, when, uh, you know, like at your home. And, and uh, I feel like we have a peaceful home. And I enjoy that. I enjoy that being my place of rest, my place of peace. And... Uh, uh, I, I do. I think that's a, a blessing if you have that kind of home. Uh, many of us were not raised in peaceful, calm Christian homes. And uh, my mom was a, was a Christian, and, and I, uh, I just uh, thank the Lord for her guidance and uh, the way that she um, moved us, you know, toward Christianity and, and uh, kept us in church, you know, and... and um, and worried about us and prayed for us. And uh, I appreciate all that. But he gives us some good advice here. He says, seek to live a quiet life. I do believe that. And uh, 
mind your own business. Now, I, I think this is, this is good. We do. We need to mind our own business. That's not saying if we see someone in trouble that we can't help. If we know that someone's being hurt that we can't speak up. Uh, not that. But, you know, don't be a busybody. Don't get in everybody's business. And um, it says work with your own hands. I think it's important that we work so that we know where things come from. You know, uh, my husband and I both said, you know, my mom and dad, um, you know, they couldn't help us when we got married. And his mom and dad uh, tried to help us what they could. And, uh, but... Uh, and and they did. They were a blessing. Both were a blessing to us. But, you know, they couldn't buy us a house and put us in it and do all those kind of things. We had to work for it. And uh, I think when you have to work for what you have, you appreciate uh, what God has given you because uh, you work for it, but he's been he's the one who enables us to do it. He's the one that gives us the strength and the, and the knowledge to do what we do. And uh, it's a blessing. It's a gift. And uh, so, uh, uh, but I do think you appreciate it. I, I think you appreciate uh, those types of gifts in your life. Because I guess you have a part maybe in, in doing it. And it says, um, behave properly, you know, do the right thing. Like I said, uh, be generous, you know, anytime we can, you know, give. And uh, give with an uh, open and, lo and loving heart. We talk many times about giving. And, uh, you know, if you don't do it with the right heart, you don't get the blessing. And so we want to do it with the right right heart, uh, kind of heart. Uh, don't depend on others. You know, depend on God. But to the best you can, you know, you, you, you make your own way and go your own way and be your own person and provide for yourself and for your family and uh, help others when you can. But depend on God. And uh, so I think this has been a... Uh, a challenge, you know, today in our lesson and a reminder of how we need to uh, uh, rely on the Lord. And I, I hope y'all are having a good week and uh, please pray for my son-in-law and his uh, um, um, stepmom passed away and, and uh, she was like a real mom to him because they, uh, he had been in her life since he was two years old. So uh, it's been a challenge for him. And uh, I also uh, pray for uh, my cousin Tommy's family who's passed away this week. And so we've kind of had two deaths in our family this week and or this past week. And so uh, just please pray for us and, uh, and, and them. So uh, we're, until next time, and I hope y'all are doing well. Much love.